Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Greenview at the Marbled Farmstead. Where for the last four years, this is the busiest weekend, the beginning of the busiest weekend of the year for this Homestead Association. What they've done here is they've offered antique dealers and antique uh, aficionados from around the Midwest to come here and sell their antiques. They put up tents on the lawn here and people come from all over the place to buy and look at antiques. And what it does is it finances the effort to bring this farmstead back to a living history farm. Well, Charlotte Wooler, it's really looking up. The last time we were here was probably something like 10 years ago. Yes. And the farmstead group had just, just come, they actually mm -hmm. didn't even own the property yet, exactly. but they were the caretakers of this old farmstead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, four years ago, your group was able to buy mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. the 10 acres that accompanies yes. it yes. and able to sort of trying to bring it back to what, mm -hmm. to what, an educational facility? Yes, educational facility where people can come and learn about agriculture in the time period that we're going to lose. It's, it went from horse and plow to steam engine to actual gas engine. So it trans hired over, over time mm -hmm. into quite uh, an agricultural success. We also have an immigration story that's very important as well here. And just the, um, the family and what they did for the community. We have a story to tell and we're afraid to lose it. And knowing that a German immigrant can come to this uh, United States, mm -hmm. try to start a new life, and he became successful. We call it the story of America. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. John Marbled was the original yes. immigrant from Germany. Mm -hmm. He comes over here, I guess he's able to scrape together enough money for a couple of hundred acres. Well, actually, when he came from Germany, he brought ten to $12,000 with him. He mm -hmm. had sold a farm to his brother, and there actually still is a Marbled farmstead in Bad Bergen, Germany. Mm -hmm. So he, he had sold that to his brother, and came to Petersburg yeah. and lived until he could purchase this yeah. property. Now you can imagine in 1851 when he began building this house, mm -hmm. what a monumental effort mm -hmm. this would have been because yes. on the prairie there wasn't anything like this. No, not at all. In fact, uh, Greenview wasn't even in existence when he settled here. Mm -hmm. And actually this house has been, the roof line had been lifted up in the late 1800s. So it was a little more downscaled, so uh -huh. to speak, uh, early on, but then it became more grand yeah. as they could, you know, earn their money yeah. and could make it look nicer. Now, we're we're going to move around this side a okay. little bit so we can see the side. Your group, like every other group that tries to preserve history, has the task, the challenge of trying to bring these monstrous old uh, facilities back, not only to the way they might have been in the day, but part of it is to keep the deterioration from happening as well, which yes. is an ongoing battle. It, it is an ongoing battle. When we bought the property, it was in dire condition. And we have worked diligently with fundraisers, and we now have a project manager who has helped us to prioritize to make sure that we didn't lose those important outbuildings. Mm -hmm. And Andrew can explain all of that. But we have something here that no other farmstead uh, of the time period, as let alone that's left on this yeah. prairie, uh, to be able to tell about. It is remarkable because we're just looking at the house right now, but mm -hmm. behind this is a whole network yes. of outbuildings which made the farm work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's look up at what you've been able to do so far. Now, there were some details on this house you did not want to lose. No, we did not. And we had people uh, restore the corbels and the fascia, and we also put in new soffits and then guttering system when we bought the property in mm -hmm. 2012. Uh, if we did not do that, the gutter system was no not here at the time, so that helped save the foundation. And since then, we've, of course, done other things like underpinning the house. So mm -hmm. eventually, the tuck pointing can be done so there's no more settling and mm -hmm. things that go on. Mm -hmm. But we are really proud of that fascia and how well it looks oh, and what gorgeous. an accent it is to the it's home. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, now, you, you don't spend a lot of time, nobody spends a lot of time inside the house. The focus is to get the shore up to, to stabilize the outside of the house so that mm -hmm. you can begin that work. That's another lifetime away. The inside yes. is going to be a lifetime mm -hmm. away. But what we're going to concentrate on today is what you all have been able to accomplish on the outside because it's more than just a house. Yes, it is. It, it's yes, it's it a is. whole, uh, uh, it's, it's like a little town. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, well, it was a very self-sufficient farm. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they raised cattle, sheep, hogs, chickens. Mm -hmm. They raised doves, which was a delicacy in the day. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was self-sustaining fruit bushes, uh, orchards, huge gardens. Yeah. So they had a lot of uh, hired people that worked with them, so they fed them as well. Yeah. Yes, a smokehouse, so they did their own butchering wow. and smoked their own meat. 
Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Charlotte. We'll, conti well, we'll continue the tour with the, did you say your, su your project supervisor? Uh, project manager, manager. Andrew. Okay, mm -hmm. thank, thank you. Well, thank you, we appreciate it. Andrew Gain, when you first became acquainted with the marbled uh, farmstead, mm -hmm. and you first saw what they were dealing with, what was the was first thing that went through your mind? Well, <laughs> they needed a little bit of guidance and to have a little bit better plan laid out. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when you have an organization like this, there are people with lots of good intent and, and lots of good intentions, but if they're not in the field of actually building and reconstructing something, it's really hard to make a plan. And when I met them, I uh, got them introduced to an architect that would later on start drawing out and laying the foundation of how this place was going to be mm -hmm. rebuilt. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my in my thoughts at the time when I met yeah. him. And was, you do preservation work. That's what you do, right? Yes. And you're, yeah. you're from Petersburg, right? Yes. So this is your home county. This yes, is your this, home this county. is where I'm from. And yes. uh, so, uh, you know, I was a little bit more interested in this project probably in some other projects might have been, you yeah. know, yeah. so it was uh, it was worthwhile. Yeah, we're, we're on the north side of the house now. So let's walk back between what would have been, oh, I don't know, I wouldn't have called it the backyard, but this would have been sort of like the nerve center of the farm because between the house and all the outbuildings is where a lot of activity was going on. Yeah, this was, this has actually had a bigger hub than what most people realized. This back porch right here, for instance, uh, there was actually a staircase that's missing right there that went up and down, and these two doors, one side was for the men, one side was for the women. Mm -hmm. So their hands that lived on the farm stayed up there and they came down here to what would have been the summer kitchen where they would have been getting food to eat. Okay, and, uh, all right, and now of course we got the antique show going on, so it's full of antiques. Yes, it is. But it would have been a kitchen. Okay. Yes. And to walk me through, then, then what's the next building we see here? This right here is a smokehouse and that's where they would have actually hung up meat and there was actually timbers that went back and forth inside of there originally that they hung everything up in and mm -hmm. then those holes up there was to allow ventilation mm -hmm. and when they first started they would have plugged the holes let the thing build up and then they would have opened them up I and let see. it uh, Interesting. to smoke it and then okay. the next thing over here is the wash house and the top part of it is what they use as the wash house so they would have had wash tubs and bins and everything to be able to wash linens and curtains and everything. Mm -hmm. But down below was actually a milk room and that's where they actually stored, you know, the milk after they got done with the cattle in the morning. They'd keep it down there because it was really cool. Just that much cooler enough. There to is a huge it. temperature difference uh -huh. in that right okay. there. All right, so wash house, and they would use, of course, it had to be a pretty big farm to need a wash house. Yes. Most, most little farms, you know, you'd, you'd just have a little old crank deal out on the porch, but this was a pretty big operation. Yeah, they had a lot of them, you know, a lot of people working yeah. for them. Yeah. So it took a little bit more. I can see that you have a lot of work to do, too, because what you're, what you're doing here, see, you can see the chimney is, is, is falling apart. I imagine that was the condition of the roof as well. So you have a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of shoring up work to do, don't you, before you really get started? Yeah, actually this building right here a year ago, that whole entire north wall was completely collapsed. And there was no floor, no roof, no nothing. Oh, so we just rebuilt this mm -hmm. in the fall. But where that uh, two by six is sticking out at the top, that top ridge board is actually going to extend all the way across because this was a covered porch right here. Uh -huh. And that roof went over the top of the smokehouse onto the wash house. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. And then behind the wash house, there was actually a carriage house and a small coal room back there. <laughs> wow, what, so what there, a complex. Yeah, it, there's actually a lot of stuff to really figure out and to know exactly where everything has to be to make all the points line up. Well, walk with me through here too, because this is, it doesn't just end there. We've got, we want to watch out there's something to step, step well, on here. That's actually be... where the torch post was that actually held this section of the roof up. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and so you're going to have to replace that too, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. After you, sir. Okay. Somebody's put a trailer in between us and our destination, but we can still see it from here. Okay. So this back here was 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 the ice house yeah that was the ice house it's actually really deep and if you look at the top corner or the top point up there you can see that winch up there they would open that up and that way they could actually bring in large blocks of ice mm -hmm. and that's really deep 
it probably went down about 10 to 12 feet down into the ground and it's a double brick wall. In other words, it's hollow in the center to be able to keep yeah. it cool. And, okay, uh, so the ice was always kept below ground and like you say, almost 10, 10 feet below ground. Yes, and they cover it up with straw yeah. and sawdust and yeah. everything. And then right next to it was their pigeon coop and it that was actually a huge building. It was uh, 20 by 40 if I remember right. We don't right. see any of that right now, no, right? just okay. the foundations there okay, for it. Okay, pigeon coop. Now let's go this way because there's a boiler room over here we need to see. Careful of this walkway there. Walk around these bricks. Now, when I heard boiler room, I thought, what in the world is a boiler room doing that far away from the house? They knew what they were doing, though, didn't they? Well, the, there was actually several reasons for that. Boilers are very temperamental, and boilers can't explode. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't okay. want in the basement so, so you don't, you don't, and, and the time period that that boiler was put in, boilers for a home was still kind of a new thing. Sure. This was new technology at yeah. the time. So that's actually a three brick thick wall. And that building right there goes down into the ground another eight, 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And that boiler was actually below ground right there. And it has a 10 inch pipe that went into the house that brought the steam in and then it has a return that comes back to it. And the boiler was on that side where you can see there's two windows. On the right side. It was on the right uh -huh. side. And this left side was nothing more than a giant coal room. Mm -hmm. And it was a big uh, boiler house, and it had a chimney on it that stuck up probably about 30 feet. Wow. Well, they had yeah. more going on there than a boiler, don't you suspect? Yeah, I think they were producing power in there at that time because it was, that, that's a little bit bigger building than what a boiler house yeah. would have needed. And the amount of coal they were going through suggests that they would have had some means of producing power there. Now, if they had, if they had hot and cold running water, and electricity in the 1880s, that was a real rarity, wasn't it? Oh yes, these people, uh, they were right on the cutting edge yeah. of, you know, farm life. I mean, a modernization. Um, so, I mean, they had a huge complex of farm buildings all around here. They even have a uh, pump house about, oh, I guess that'd be about 800 yards down. Mm -hmm. And that pump house, the well is still there, and you can open it up and look down inside of this thing. It's a massive well that was producing mm -hmm. and pumping out a lot of water, and they were pumping it all the way up to here. So, you know, it was industrious, quite, weren't they? Yes, they were very, very industrious. Yeah. Wes, I think you're starting your third year on this project, yes. and uh, it, it, what architects do that maybe some contractors don't do is they do a lot of investigation and, and they've got to sort of unearth what it was before they can put it back together. So Andrew thought, you know, we need an architect on, on this project and, and that's where you came along. Yeah, I've worked with Andrew before and uh, so we had a good working relationship. Uh, and I, uh, I, I, we talked together about what needed to be done. There was absolutely uh, nothing drawn except for one drawing done by a gentleman that did a pretty good job on uh, on it I thought mm -hmm. and uh, but we had nothing in detail so I spent a couple summers ago measuring every every little thing about this and uh, all even all the other buildings out here not just the house and I even drew a site plan trying to get an idea mm -hmm. of what uh, where everything was so that we had a basis to start yeah. you have to know what's there first before you can start to restore. Sure, sure. That summer that you started, that was a good hot summer too, oh, was it? <laughs> miserable. I, I'd go through towel after towel, but, but you know, I sweat a lot anyway. So. <laughs> well, let, let's see what something you came up with here, because well, yeah, these, these are some of your drawings, right? Yeah, these are drawings for this restoration work here, not not the house so much as yeah. this part back here that you talked to right, Andrew and, about. And that's what we're looking at here, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, from we have we have had a lot of people uh, provide us with photographs. That's really helped us in the in the restoration. Uh, those people that have the photographs and and really have uh, been uh, you can't yeah. imagine how much that's helped us. Yeah. yeah. And, and to the point where we didn't know this little dormer was going to be up there until. Till we saw a photograph, and once yeah. we, <laughs> that was kind of a surprise. Yeah, and, and that's going to be. Will 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 Paul or Andrew then try to go ahead and rebuild that oh, too? Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Eventually, we, yeah. our whole uh, goal is to make it look like it was before. Mm -hmm. You know, back mm -hmm. in the 
back in the day. So know? how many years does a project like, like that take? I mean, well, it's take it's, it's well, <laughs> projects take. <laughs> They take as long as they it, take, It's a right? relationship uh, has to do with money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you have lots of money, you can move if faster. They, if they could, if the association could bring it all in right now, you guys could get it done in a year, but it'll take uh, much longer than that. It might take longer than yeah, a year, but yeah. we, we could get it done a little quicker. Yeah. But, you know, there's there's something to be said about time. Time time allows you to rethink and, and get things worked out. Sometimes. If you go too fast, you might not get it, get it exactly right. Yeah. And so the more time we have to think about it and, and the more time we have to have these kind of events, which, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're going to keep going after everything's restored. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 like uh, people feel like they're involved when they sure. see a little bit at a time. And, you know, it's yeah. A, yeah. We don't want to drag it out too long. That's though. right, but it's nice, you know. If you come to, if you came to this antique show last year and you come this year, you say, "Oh, look oh, yeah. at the progress oh, yeah. they've made." Oh yeah, look you at know. it. Yeah, yeah we've a lot of, uh, and some things you haven't even seen is we had to we had to put foundations under this thing so it didn't yeah. settle anymore. That yeah. was one of our big worries, and that's been done, mm -hmm. and uh, some grading, and yeah. we've started in here, and and this got rebuilt. Andrew talked about that, and. Uh, We've been moving along, yeah. I think, at a pretty steady pace. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're not we're not rushing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're doing what yeah. what what we can. Well, good luck in the future. Thanks for visiting with us. Oh, no problem yeah. whatsoever. Anytime. Okay. <laughs> Barbara, as a member of the, the the marbled family, when you come back to this property and see all this going on, what goes through your mind? It's amazing. Um, I, I've seen this place when it was with trees growing through it and um, you could hardly tell there was a house here. Mm -hmm. And to see it now is just unbelievable. We look, as we look around, I mean, we've got the, we've got the antique sh uh, uh, weekend coming up and you can see all the activity here. Mm -hmm. and, and as we stand sort of in what I would call sort of like the courtyard, if a farm has a courtyard, right. where all these outbuildings are now being put back together and they're trying to bring this back to a living farm. You can see that so much, it's, it's a, just a buzz of right, activity going right, on. Right, right, right. Um, and it's starting to feel, I think, like it would have felt back then mm -hmm. when it was being built. Oh, it was busy, busy, busy. busy Let time. Me, let's show some of, the, some of the pictures from your family here. I know you're looking at this upside down, but point out to me if you can, like when this would have been and who are we looking at here? This is, this is at the, the high point of the farm, I guess. Right, this would have been just around the turn of the century, 1891 is mm -hmm. when this was taken. And you can tell it has a lot of the Victorian aspects to it. Um, the house has actually changed some over the years. It was built in 1851, but um, at that point in time, it was more the federal style, um, mm -hmm. and it was only like a two-story structure. And then similar to Lincoln's home, they lifted the roof and added, a, you know, an attic mm -hmm. to it with the dormers. And then they also added on um, a bathroom and also a conservatory. Mm -hmm. So then you can start to see how you know, all of the Victorian aspects, of course, were added as well. In this picture, too, you can see several generations because you can see, is the man up in the upper corner, this is the original John Marbled? Actually, no, this is his son. Oh, okay. Um, the original John Marbled is... He looks uh, to be the oldest yes. over here. This is, this is John H. Marble. He built the house then, huh? He was the one that came and built the house, uh -huh. and he came with his three children. He was a widower, and so that was kind of a big trip to um, oh come yeah. over the ocean with three children. His mm -hmm. youngest was six. And in fact, your grandfather is also in this picture, is he not? Yes, actually, there's three generations here. So this is, of course, H.H., mm -hmm. and he is... Let's see if I can find him. Yes, he's here. Okay. And then um, this is my grandfather. That's your grand. And he would have been a young man at that time, right, right? Right. And he would have been the last generation to live and work this farm before yes. before it stopped That's being correct. a working farm. That's correct. Okay. Now I also want to show. We talked about what a. Will you hold these for me? Sure. We talked about what a buzz of activity this was. Look at this, this uh, this herd of sheep. My God, there are hundreds and hundreds of them. They, they were very big into farming, and um, oh, it was also, you know, Germans were really big about being self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. So we talk about being self-sustaining today, but they truly believed in being self-sustaining. So not only did they have 
the beef, which was their mainstay, mm -hmm. but they also raised everything else. So you had pigs, they had pork, they had lambs, they did the wool, um, they had chickens. And um, my grandmother actually in the 20s was talking about that um, the first thing that she would do in the morning and the last thing she did before she went to bed at night was to turn 600 eggs by hand. Oh my and when I asked her how long it took her, she said about an hour and a half. Now, I don't Whoa, know about she you, was nimble. but, she but was to, quick. to be able to turn, <laughs> you know, 600 eggs in an hour and a half is, is you know, doing the math is, is now, quite fast. This, is, this shows you what the operation was like, too. Here's an aerial. And you right. can see this is a major operation. They had right. how, how many acres did they did they work? Well, initially they started out with just 200 acres, mm -hmm. but eventually it grew um, until they had up to 6,000. Um, obviously, when you're doing that much acreage, and you have to remember they're using a horse and plow, mm -hmm. so this is all horse run. This was mm -hmm. not the time of tractors. That that meant that. You know, they basically had these little farmsteads that were scattered around, mm -hmm. like satellite farms, around this main sure. homestead. Sure, and that's what put people to work around here. Yes. Um, when I when I did a story here, it's been 10 or 12 years ago. Um, this this project was just a, a dream. It wasn't anything like what it right. is now. Right. But we brought people in whose families got their start because right. of the marbled farm, and there mm -hmm. were a lot of farmers that wouldn't have had the wherewithal to start a farm on their own and start a family right. on their own. Right. The marbles were very big into making sure that they took care of the community, didn't they? Yes, yes. Actually, um, all of their, their buildings, this included, included housing for um, basically folks that they brought over from Germany. Mm -hmm. And they would bring them over. They basically had this upper structure split into two, so women were on one side and men were on the other. Mm -hmm and they would teach them English, they would get them accustomed to America. Oftentimes they were moved out onto these satellite farms and then from there they would start farms of their own. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the community are German farmers. I mean, they, they are originally from Germany and they came through the Marble Farm. Yes. Well, thank you for visiting with us about this. Oh, this my pleasure, yeah. my pleasure. If you have any other questions, just let me know. Thank you. Dean Campbell, you love projects like this, don't you? No, I you're you're like an investigator. I have been all of my life in yeah. interpretive history, uh, cultural and historical sites. Yeah, yeah. And this is quite a sight out here because as, as we've learned in this program, there were a lot of German farms, but there weren't many German farms that incorporated all of this sort of network into it, is there? No, this was a huge operation. And um, I know in 1924, as late as 1924, they had a cattle sale and uh, brought in somewhere around $25,000 at that time. Mm -hmm. That was quite a chunk That's of change. That's a massive amount of money. Yeah, yeah at that time. Yeah. And, and uh, apparently, uh, until about 1929, they were, they were thriving. And then, of course, every, the wheels came off everything. They were. And, um, of course, uh, Marble family, the older part of the family, uh, would extend um, loans and uh, make provisions for people to live on a property uh, on a handshake. Mm -hmm. And of course, when uh, came the depression, it was give up my property or not honor the handshake. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think there's still an undercurrent <laughs> about that today. Let's walk up. You've, you've been able to learn a little bit about this barn. We're walking up to the barn. Mm -hmm. Of course, like everything else the Marvels built, it was big. It was. It, it had a concrete foundation. As you can see, it kind of wraps around us here in, an, in a rectangular fashion. We're going up the ramp that would have taken the, the carts and the, and the, or the, uh, a wagons up into the barn. That's correct. And extended on through and out the other side. All of the, the way barn. out the other side. So, and, and that was a long throw. That was probably, I don't know, 150 feet or something. That's a oh, long way. Easily, yeah. yeah. And in the meantime, you also found that not only did they build with the concrete, but they would, they would incorporate brick and also logs. And, and I guess framework for the uh, frame for the outside of the barn. Yeah, well, the logs laid on top of um, brick supports, as you mm -hmm. can see over here. Mm -hmm. um, and earlier in the season, before any of this was cleared at all, I did find a timber laying out that way that was 18 feet tall. So Whoa. the uh, first story was wow. probably at least that height. Any idea how many stories it might have been? I have no idea. Is I there any way to find that out? Well, looking at the old pictures, we could probably determine how much was a loft in the top of the building. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, so, so you also learn, I know, I know people who know barns, they like to learn about barns because they not only learn, they, they learned how the animals and the people lived mm -hmm. just from, from the way they built their barns. 
very interesting. That's right. Yeah. I just think the, the site has a terribly important historical um, uh, interpretive site. It's going to be a major tourism site. Someday. You think so? Oh, I'm sure of it. Yeah, yeah. And and what will your work consist of from going forward from here? What will you be attempting to do? Well, um, for one thing, like this this walkway through these big stumps in here, we're going to try to get the uh, people uh, over at Rochester to knock them out mm -hmm. uh, to expose. That is to take the outer perimeter of some of the historic buildings that we know are here. There's some right over here in this little flat. Uh, we're not sure of their function yet, but uh, the, the concrete foundations mm -hmm. are there. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Well, you know, you've got your uh, archaeological work cut out for you as well, don't you? <laughs> yes, not, I do. You're an investigator and an archaeologist. Well, do I don't claim to be an archaeologist, <laughs> but uh, I have many friends who are. Yeah. Thank you. You're and, welcome. And good luck. Nice talking you with you. Uh, the Marbled Farmhouse Association uh, hosts numerous events each year, one early in the year. Then there's the June event, which is the antique event. In July, they have a dinner, and in, in November, they have events. So if, if you want to learn more about this organization and also come out here to help them, they'd be more than happy to count you as a member. With another Illinois Story in Greenview, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.